G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. I want to teach you something to paint in acrylic. It's a bit cold here today, so I've got my sleeves on. But before we get started, I want to put the size of my canvas there and the colours running up the screen that I'm going to use. Now, this one's going to be an autumn four coloured scene, a tree waterscape, a bit of a sun setting down in the distance as well, some rocks, beautiful aspects to put inside a beautiful colourful painting, all right? So get on over here and I want to show you what I'm putting on the canvas here. So just so you know what I'm doing, you saw the picture in the opening credits, that's the actual painting, and I've got my horizon area here. I've got a sky, some distant mid-ground trees, and I've got the main hero of the painting right here with its reflections. That's the way I'm laying it out. So what I'm going to do now is prime the whole thing so I can get the sky and the water happening. So what I want to do is open up my titanium, soft body titanium white, and put some retarder in there so as I can get some beautiful blending of these acrylic colours. Now I only paint in acrylic, hence my given name, the Acrylic Guru, some people have given me over the years. And I want to simply prime that canvas cloth. So I'll get it all on there. I don't want to try and make a sloppy mess if I can help it. All the way down. I put those pencil lines there, it's just graphite lead pencil. It's pretty safe to paint acrylic over that. Okay, I'm pushing it all on. I'm making sure all the tooth of my canvas is covered so I don't get any surprises later on down the track. And now I want to just push that on with the tip of this brush, giving it a nice, thin, even coat. I'm just grabbing my Indian yellow to put in the horizon area there. So that, so that line, my horizon area, that's where I want this. And I want to bring this down into the water just like that. I'll get up the sky a little bit. All right, too easy, wasn't it? Now I've just wiped that brush and I'm picking up the yellow ochre and some magenta here just to get some kind of mauvey colour going. And I want to scoot this across the sky there, bringing it into some of that yellow, because my horizon line's here, okay? So this is going to be low in the sky, but deeper in the water. Getting that there. And I just want to scurry it up to where I will be getting my blue. And we'll put a bit into this in the water. Uh, where are we? I've got my horizon there there some of this come along here like so and I want to scoot that through the yellow just contaminate it slightly and then I'm stroking it left and right to give it the water vibe now I've got cerulean blue some mid-tone gray and some phalo blue I want to get the gray and just make the blue a bit on the gray side to give it that kind of that's just the vibe I want the blue to be. There we go, that's plenty of grey within that. And I want to get this sky blue in. I'm pushing it in there. Then I'm going to bring it down to that reddish colour. And now I can scurry it. See how I'm doing this, just splicing it, I suppose. I don't know if that's the word you would use. But that's what I'm doing. There's my sky. And picking up the phalo blue, I just want to get a deeper value of that within our water. Let me see if some of that's going to go like that. Just down here I want this. Now that's very bluish, so I'm going to get it a bit darker. Scurry that up there like that. There we go. Now back down to the pile of paint onto the palette again. Wiping the brush, picking up this phalo blue. What I'm going to do, I want to stamp it on to control my Darkness. I want it very dark around here, down the bottom. I don't want it powdery blue like that. And then I'll just simply waterfy that to keep the darkness of it there. I'm not brushing so hard. I'm just going to push that back with the tip of the brush. 
There we go. To me, water reflections can be distorted. Now I want some clouds in the sky. I'll start from the lower part of the sky and slowly build my way up. Now, horizons there, those trees are gonna be there. So I want a nice glare from where the sun area is going to be. So I'm just pushing this on, just like so. And then I'm gonna slowly spider it out like that. I'm not worried about this side because I'm gonna have some big trees there. I just want that. They're picking up a blending brush and your kitchen chucks wipe because as you blend, you're building up paint. And I just wanna glare this right out into the sky. So just watching it glare up. So now there's one pass. I feel I need a, another pass of that. So I'm gonna quickly get some of these little laying clouds here before I contaminate it or just something lacing in here. There we go. Something over here, so it's getting contaminated now. So I've washed it and reloaded it, and I'm redoing this glary bit here. So I do want it a lot glary than what it is. There we go. Just easily blend that into those colours, pushing it away. Wipe the brush. Those clouds that I put over there. I'll just simply sit them down like some cirrus type of clouds. Just getting the tops of them wavy. They're cirrus type, so they can they don't have to be so much in cahoots with the horizon line. Can even get some more of that and scallop them. I'm just not liking those three lines there. They looked a bit iffity affity. Just something like that. That's it happy with that and that glare it's going to be in the water as well so where's my trees coming down about here there so I want a, a lot of glare of this so what I'll do I'm just going to simply put it there and build up a nice glary spot there in the water as well so once we've finished our water it's all finished and complete <laughs> if that makes any sense with not trying to go back if we don't have to. So I want to just simply stamp that down, wipe the build up and just pull this back into that yellow, just getting it a nice gradient of the two colours there. And you'll see once we put all the other stuff on top how all this comes into play. Study the procedure I've done this painting if you love it and like it and want to do it and work out your order, you're gonna do it and follow along in the video. See, that's in the water there. From where the trees are, I wanna get something up here, there, it's picking up the blue. So I wanna, now that's a bigger cloud, I can put the bum on that. See how I put a parallel with the horizon line? I've done it in other videos, just a little bit of a bum on that. They are parallel with the horizon area and now, I can get the corner of this brush, twist and turn more, keep brighter values and less brighter values within that cloud body and probably get the top of it, no hard lines there, just pushing it up and the same on this cloud here. I've got a beautiful pocket there or a window. Sometimes they look good and if you like that, leave it in your work, it's part of your signature. And we're just gonna add some more clouds like that. See how easy that was? You can do it. Now these here, I just want some seriously type clouds up here at the very top it's just all scattered there and these can start coming long and there we go i'll blend that in i don't want to overdo it and these don't have any particular hard edge just twist them add turmoil smear them have a look at them and watch the wonder happen before your eyes Work out how much pressure you need to put on there. See, I'm feeling I want a nice vibrant bit right in the guts of that one there. Bring this in front of that kind of, twist it around. I do try not to just go boom, 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 boom. I am not brushing for fingerprints, okay? I'm creating clouds and I want to control the way my clouds look. That's why I do them the way I do in acrylic. This, this procedure works for acrylic. 
Oils are totally different if you're painting in oils. Now I'll do this bit here first, the reflection-y cloud bits. So where we got, we got there. We're going to have kind of clouds here. So why I'm doing this bit first, the paintbrush is going to pick up bits of yellow and whatnot. And I don't want to bring blue and yellow and everything into it. You know what I mean? So I'm just kind of getting, these ones here are a bit lineal, like meaning like lines. And then I'll slowly change the bottom ones. So see me brush out, it's all spayed out. This is an old blending brush or so the black haired ones now, same brush. You just do that and you can control how you want them to blend again. Okay. Now I just want to get this kind of in the water there. Give it a bit up there. Distort it so they're not too distinct lines. They've got kind of cloud vibes to them. There we go. And we'll simply wipe that brush and add the bottom ones in the blue area. So we'll just get some bits and bobs here. I'll see how I've pocketed them up the top? They're like that up the top. So I'm kind of just doing them like that down here. That'll do. That will do it. And we just want to, this paint's still wet because of that craft white and the retarder I laid on before I put the colours down. And it allows this blue colour to stay wet. And then when I'm adding this cloud on there, it's able to blend into it as well. Now my brush is just getting full. I've got to stop because I'm just going to make a lot of mushy mess. And it'll start looking iffity effity. So you just... Wipe your brush and you watch, you can control where you're pushing it again. Sometimes you can forget to wipe your brush and you'll be making a bit of a snotty mess and you'll be wondering, what's going on? It's just remembering, sometimes we forget we're all human. There we go. Now at that stage, we've got this. We've got our sky and our water. So if anything, your sky comes over in your painting down to the land, and then your water's going to come flat towards you. That's what you've got to visualise. Now, I've given that a dry. We're going to put in the mid-ground now. Now, I hope you can see that. I've pencilled it on just so you can see it. My horizon line's there where the water meets the land. This half is a reflection. I wanted the reflection coming down into this yellow, but leaving this glare here, because at the top, some of the glare is going to be hidden but we want to see it in the reflection and now I've got the top half just going exactly where I want it so when I pick up my brush which I'm just using a filbert and paint it on I know where I'm going to go instead of wondering as I'm painting it along so I've got burnt umber here I'm just going to blackulate that I should have just blackulated my burnt umber the way I normally do because you want a nice dark background for your trees to stand out so we have our pencil markings there that you could see. I'm going to grab my bullshit stick, okay? And I just want to come along the bottom and just do a nice straight line like that. Form right out to where I'm going to bring them. See how easy that was? Now, I want to just use this to get the top of these trees there. I'm going to have to detail them, but I just want them kind of tree-like, hairy-like. They're in kind of silhouette. They're going to have a bit of colour within them. So I'm just creating the tops there with this brush and blocking it in. Now I've got my little dagger brush there. I'm, I'm going to use that to detail the tops of them. So I want that about there. Just getting there. This is how easy you can do acrylic reflections. You don't need to have the paint wet, put it on and scratch it down. You can if you want, but this is a more take your time, relax and controlled process, I feel. Now I will pick up my dagger brush and I just want to just get some detail out here now. Making it worthwhile, not just having it a iffity effity painting. You've put detail and time and effort within it. Now we're getting the bottoms. Just 
getting the tops of these. Now this, these reflections are not in wild, aggressive water. They're in pretty still water, so you get to see a bit of the detail. Now, have a look there. See there? I'll replicate that bigger one there. You can have fun doing that, putting something deliberately at the top, unique and distinct, so you can put it in your bottom there. Go something quite big there for some reason out in the forest or whatever it is, and we'll do that down here as well. Now I'm using a small detailed flat just to get some of the ripples in the reflections here on some of these ones here. You know how I splice it. You've seen me do this before if you're a regular viewer. I've given that a dry. I've picked up my the brush I use to do all this, my dagger brush. And I've got me burnt umber. I've got my raw sienna and burnt sienna. And you always start from darkest to lighter. So if anything, I'll see how many of them are going to be burnt umbery colour within there. So I might want, let's get some of this broken up on there first. There we go. Just want some pockets of this radiating down somewhere. There we go. I'm picking up some of the burnt sienna and I'm starting to get some trees in front now. So I just want to kind of make them like that. The Where your horizon line area is there, you want to leave that kind of darkish. If you kill too much of the dark, that's okay, you can put it back. Okay. And we're just simply doing this, leaving a lot of the dark there, coming from the top, coming down, do something here, bit of a tree there, bit of a tree there. And like I said with your reflection, I just want to pull it down like this. So Now I'm picking up the raw sienna here and we're going to make some trees. Just take your time, like I say, always say, there's no rush to do anything. That's enough of that colour. I've just picked up the Australian Sienna. It's a bit more goldish. Watch this one. This one looks a bit more light fall autumn colours. Getting right up there. Now I'm going to stop about here because any more of this bit here that we see, I want it to be glary from that sunshine behind it. Okay. Before I finish, I've just added a little bit more white to that Australian Sienna and I just want to. and it can dribble a little bit over the black. Now nothing's dried yet. I could have, should have dried it. It's not overly wet, so it's not too bad. I'm just looking. That's kind of getting those four colours going. This bit here might look a bit mumble jumble. I, I might have to add some darkness back into that. I'm grabbing some of the burn umber 
and I want to this is only a small detail but it needs to be done I'm mixing it with white okay just so I can put that glare at the back where the bright sunshine is going down and just here where you might see it I want a lot of this to be lighter right at the top past the darkness and then just gradually past see those little black hair bits you go on just beyond them and just filtering it down somewhere there and hopefully when I look into my monitor it's got this the vibe that it needs to have all right, I'm grabbing my Australian Sienna over here and I'm mixing some white with it as well because I want a real glary punch of that. Uh, how white do we want it? About there, we can come a little bit brighter as we go. Now this bit is what's going to sit that mid-ground back. Watch what we do here. You need your bullshit stick here. Or, or a good steady hand. And we want to get some of it sharp and then focus a uh, blur it out so from this very side here and I want to come to about here so I want this to be quite sharp in this color right across the horizon line there and let it blur let it blur now to about there that's good enough I'm going to move my bullshit stick now I need this just on the below half here, let me get some of it off there. I'll use my mouse stick here, I'll, I'll see. And I want to blur this now all the way along like a mist from that. So I need it reasonably dry and scratchy. Find a brush that's going to do this for you. You don't want to cover up all your reflection. You want to kind of see through this. So I've got too much on my brush. I want to wipe a bit off. Come across here. And I want it nice. There we go. Look at that, how scratchy that is. And I just want to go like this. See, I can kind of just see through it. It's quite intense in this bit because that's where the glare is. There's not much on my brush. It's pretty much all been pushed off but there's enough to stain the painting as we need it to be now if that line there's a bit iffity effity I can easily straighten that up with some darker color and now I just simply want to get more white it's contaminated a little bit but just enough just so as we can where are we I want this night now I might have to dry it a bit I want this bit here nice and glary and bright so it's white but it's contaminated white see how that looks that's what i want you to get now i'm going to have some rocks here i've just drawn them there so you can see they're still going to come down but i want to get the grass and the dirt here and these trunks of these autumn fall trees in and also the reflections in the water then I can put these rocks over the reflections so I've got a few colors here I'm picking for the autumn fall colors my Indian yellow I've got actually a quinacridone red get yourself a nice red and also there's that color there the Australian sienna okay using a flat brush and grabbing just the blackulated burnt umber and black to mix together I just black yellow that's just a word I use so we'll simply put the rock platform here first just so you can see what's happening here so see this white pit there I want the nice point jutting out right into that but leaving something underneath those reflections don't come right up there and start covering everything up because that's when stuff turns to snot now the top of this just kind of you can scratch it up if you want because we're going to have some just to about I don't know maybe about to this rock here now
these rocks will have reflections as well. I'll detail them with their proper colour later. I just need them there as the platform to put the, the trees and grass and that on that I'm going to have on the water. Each step down is in cahoots with the horizon line. Don't bring them down like that, otherwise it'll start looking iffity effity. Now I've grabbed that quinacridone red and I've mixed it with the Australian sienna to get some kind of fiery red colour. Now I've dried me rocks. I'm going to start from about here. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm finding the tops of the rocks and dribbling this down. You'll see after watching this video a couple of times, I've just added a little bit of white as well to opaculate that, um, how it's going to work. So, so you, you can see I've got rocks there, right? So this might not look like much, but it's just going to create all the... And now we want to get this from the top... and start pushing it up to right up here because there's going to be a lot of thick trees and busyness going on there up your day there we go and I'll just start getting some more of this there now this is just the background stuff i'm going to put the trunks on then start setting things backwards and forwards from each other okay now i've dried that i want to get my main trunks in so i want something right about here I'm going, to, I'm going to have to use a stick. I'm coming right against the edge of the painting there and we'll bring that right into there. I'll get it, I'll try and get this one the thickness that I want. These aren't very thick. Probably about there, that's as thick as you want that. And obviously you want it going thinner as you get to the top. But like I've done before, I'll just get the main gist of them in and then I'll just neaten them up off camera. So I want a nice one coming from about here and there. Sort of arching there. Another one from behind. See, I'll set this one back a bit. See, just like that. Straight up off the painting. Just like that. Now I'll simply put them into the water. That one's there. Now I will just color them in. Just finishing off here, blocking these in. I just didn't want to film the whole lot because it'll just be incredibly boring. Now I'm going to paint the four coloured leaves and foliage on these trees, but so as I'm not painting in between and out, because I need them to look forward and back from each other, I'm just going to, I've got my trunks there, I'm going to paint all the leaves and foliage on, and then the branches that I need, or the trunks that I need back forward from the back ones, I'll just simply redo over them, but I've got the skeleton on, of it there. I'm going to start at the back and come forward, so I'm grabbing the raw sienna, and the burnt sienna i'm just mixing that kind of color there i can probably have a little bit of burnt umber chucked with it as well so this tree here and those ones are the back ones and they got a bit darker so i'll start from about here and i want to go to that trunk there just like that and now what i want to do is try and get that happening it's going to come right out and then we can gradually lighten it up coming forward Coming right out like that, come on. Dancing in front of that sunlight a bit. Getting it to there. I could probably just 
creep past that a bit where the sky is. I do want to leave a little bit of sky windows in there though. Okay, now I've got that there and it's tracing here as well. I've got to lighten this up now to get that sunlight on it. I'm grabbing the yellow oxide onto that brush now. That's a quite a thick one, so I have to wet it a bit. So now this is going to hover in front there on top of that dark stuff we just put there. Let me look in the monitor. I feel it needs a little bit of white just to opaculate it. In or here. This is all going to be set back with forward detail, but the trees are slowly changing colour there. Okay, the next tree is the Australian Sienna. I've got a cat hair there. That is very translucent. So I'll grab a bit of white just to make it opaque. And I simply, from about here, I want to get this in front now. So I need some gaps within it. It's probably going to come back to about maybe there. Filter back this way. Look at that Australian Sienna, isn't that beautiful? And now I want to sit that tree there back with this colour. Okay. Now before you do this, what I will do is, because those trees there are finished, I'll grab their trunk colour and just put them back so when I'm putting this on it, I don't have to try and get them back. Okay, I'll just realise that. So this trunk colour here, get him back in there. There we go. This is how we're going to sit stuff backwards and forwards from each other. I'm just grabbing the script liner because from this tree we got these very thin branches coming out like so. Just like that. They might have the slightest fork within them. So back to our Australian Sienna now, and we're slowly pushing that brownish tree back with this, leaving some of those branches, don't kill them all. And if you want, put a bit more highlight into that same colour. If you want to just give these a bit of coulda, woulda, shoulda dried it, it's working okay though. Just so you're getting some kind of sweeping values within your foliage there. It's not perfect but it's artistic, it's pleasing to the eye. This one here. And I've done that now, grabbing the script liner. Easy, getting some of these branches under there. Where else are we? To get him back in there a little bit. I'm just finishing this off. I'll, there's nothing there, but I just want to put bits and bobs of this in the background so we'll have enough 
for the red to stick out okay so I'm just sweeping it to about oh, I can all be cluttered up right down the bottom I don't want to see this bit of the sky there it's going to be all cluttered with bits and bobs I'm bringing this trunk in front of all that orange there because that orange is behind this trunk so we need to do that before we put the red color in there the red vibe now i've just got to put the red in front of this and fix that up but before i do i want to get these colors in the reflection so back down to where they were so we're going back to our burn umber and the burnt sienna now this stuff here we got gap and i want to get that in the water to about here so where are we here it's a little bit darker this is all going to be dark here now around my trunks there through the sunlight there it's just dark dark and then we'll filter it back but down there like that there we go that's all mumble jumble darkness there i'm getting the script liner i'm just putting those trunks here back back down to our Australian sienna and the white so we got this here we want to start just dancing that in front of there it's resembling a vibe of the shadows I mean not the shadows the reflections Get some of it back here a little bit I'll, I'll sink the trunks back and forwards later. I want to get this done. So we have this within it. Now I've got that quinacridone red. And now we want to, I'm on the tape. The tape starts here. I'm on the tape. And I want to start bringing this just in front there like that. I've dried it. see the orange that I put here I want to leave some of that like that I want a bit over here now down the bottom as well while we're going for it get some of this stuff radiating down there where it is roughly up there somewhere bits of the red color down here that's the Indian yellow I'm grabbing that with that red just mixing it a bit I want to get this the way I want it to look and then I'll set my trunks like I said backwards and forwards within it now I've dried it I'm bringing this trunk back in front of that grass okay this one can come forward at the bottom again jingling back in there and this one can come back where he's supposed to be just stepping through there somewhere now we're going to finish the rocks off coming about here lock it in this is that black burn umber color mixed together just like that now I'm putting the reflection of some of those rocks in there just getting the reflection of what's up top you'll see when I highlight it all now I've got some grey and black there those rocks I want to be kind of a grey but that grey out of my tubes a little bit too 
bright, so I need to just blackulate that a bit more. Leaving where, it, like, watch this. There's the too much paint. There's that rock. Okay, it's in front of that one there. I've done the reflection. I want to bring this and just create. Where's that colour? Bits of highlighted stuff on it, you know. Scallop to there. Just if anything, the, the top side of it has the this grey vibe to it. And I'm just, I don't know, just pretty much hoping for the best and scalloping it around. After looking at it in the camera, it does look a bit rocky. Me highlights of those rocks. I better put something on that one. Otherwise, he won't look right. Now, I've just grabbed some of that craft white and put a lot of water in the paint. See, I made it very watery. I do want to get some water just kissing these rocks. to sink the reflections down. This is just the water. Just to get some lines to sink our reflections down. Getting a bit more highlights where I feel they need to go on any of it. That's wet there. I want to sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it and reveal it. And I want to thank everybody, patrons, YouTube channel members, everyone who sends me donations of support. Much appreciated. There's a lot of links in my description box below. Have a look. Join my art group, the Annapolis Art Network. Become a patron, hit the link below. not too shabby is it we've got a sunset autumn four water scene there with the sun going down and i know you can do it well i gotta say i had a lot of fun doing that beautiful colors there i hope you enjoyed it if you did tell your friends but if you don't like what i'm doing you tell everybody also have a look at this other video of mine goodbye good luck and good on you